Yesterday, we completed the chapter with regards to things that which are prohibited for a person to do in a state of major impurity as well as a minor impurity. Yesterday, we had touched the issues with regards to that which are not allowed for a person to do whilst they are in a state of a major impurity but they can do so if there are in a minor impurity. And we also covered that chapter and we completed it. Inshallah today, we wish to start a new chapter, which is the mannerisms of a person when he wishes to go to the toilet and relieve himself of stool or urine. The Deen of Allah Azza wa Jal is a religion that which is complete in every aspect and it's very detailed as to what a person should be doing whether it be in matters of the likes of toilets or it be matters of the bedroom or it be matters of a person going to the market for shopping as little as and minute everything has been covered in the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. First, to remember the fact that if a person goes into a toilet, know the fact that it's a place of impurity. It's a place where shayateen also reside. So a person upon entering into what we call the khala, or bay, uh, the al-khala they call it in Arabic, in a place which they relieve themselves, then know the fact that a person should step into it seeking refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal from the shayateen. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given us certain guidelines as to ad'iyah, the du'as that a person should recite. And it is said the fact that the person should say Bismillah, A'udhu Billah, Min al khubuthi Wal Khaba'if. So a person when he enters into the toilet, first and foremost he steps in to the toilet using his left foot first. So you step inside the toilet using your left foot and we say, Bismillah, in the name of Allah, I will enter this. Meaning anything that which is started in the name of Allah, then the help of Allah Azza wa Jal is with that person. Then what does he do? He says, A'udhu Billah. He says, I seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal. Min al-khubuthi wal khaba'if. Every female devil and every male devil that there may be present. So, from our understanding is the fact that the devils or the shayateen or the jinn, from the shayateen, uh, they reside within these, within these places. So a person should always seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal. So upon doing that, he steps in with his left foot and he relieves himself. And upon ent uh, exiting from the toilet, then he exits using his uh, right foot first. So he comes out of the toilet using his right foot and then his left foot. And then, he makes his dua, he makes his supplication to Allah Azza wa Jal and he says, Ghufranaka, O Allah, I seek your forgiveness. Now one of the reasons and uh, the hikam that the ulama mentioned with rega regards to this, why would a person seek forgiveness from Allah from doing something that which is natural? And the reason for that is uh, the, the main purpose is the fact that the person was not able to engage himself in the dhikr and the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that time of the person was spent in doing something that which did not benefit him with regards to his health, but with regards to the akhirah and his remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal, he spent that time uh, doing something else. So he seeks refuge and, and forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal with regards to that. The second thing to remember, and this is into entering into a place where there is uh, let's say um, coverage and there is privacy so you enter into the likes of a cubicle or a bathroom or, or a washroom 
uh, where, it's, where there are cubicles and there is privacy within that. In this regards to the second point is that the, 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 a person goes into an area where there is no privacy. There is no um, coverage of any sort. So what do we do in those circumstances? First and foremost, he says the fact that it's important for a person the fact that he removes himself away from the people. Meaning he should not be in a place, for example, where people can see him. He should go to a place, first and foremost, where the people will not be able to see him and their eyes would not be able to be uh, placed upon the person whilst he is in a state of relieving himself. So, it is said the fact that he should يستطر بحائط أو شجر أو شجرة أو غير ذلك or the fact that he, so what he does is the fact that to protect himself from the people's eyes, he looks for a, a ha'il, he looks for a barrier, or he looks for a coverage, somewhere where he could hide himself. And this is out of shame, and this is out of the adabs that the Prophet ﷺ has given to us. Or he goes to a place where he could um, cover himself the likes of a tree or a bush, or he goes to an area where he would not be able to be seen. The third thing he remembers with regards to the adab is the fact that وَيُحْرَمُ أَنْ يَسْتَقْبِلَ الْقِبْلَةِ The fact that he uh, faces uh, in the direction of the qibla or the fact that it be his frontal passage or his back passage. Both of these passages should not be facing in the direction of the qibla. Uh, so this means the fact that our qibla is like this. The fact that the person will not be able to face this way or that way, rather he should face this way or that way. So he should face this way or that way to make sure of the fact that, you know, um, the, he is not facing towards the Qibla. Yes, there is with regards to that uh, uh, with regards to if there is, uh, for example, a wall or a barrier where the, the likes of there is uh, the action of the companions where they would place something like that in front of them. And um, there is a hadith with regards to that. But min babul ihtiyat, a person should make sure of the fact that um, he should not in openly face towards the qibla or have his back passage facing towards the qibla. Rather, he should try to face the opposite directions, meaning um, e either um, this way or this way, or the fact that the person uh, makes sure of the fact that he places a, a, uh, has a wall or a barrier, um, the likes of that, or even a door um, just to... Uh, prevent himself from facing the in the direction of the Qibla. And I would say to respect the hadith and as well as the Qibla, as it, this is, uh, these are places of sacredness, a person can even, for example, if a person was to realize that this, this toilet is facing towards the Qibla, a person can himself move in a slight twisted direction where he could face himself in a slightly uh, different way. Um, the other thing that the person, or the fourth thing that the person should keep in mind is the fact that the person, when he urinates, the fact that there is no splashes that come back uh, and fall upon his clothes or his body. So he should be uh, cautious of the fact that the person where he urinates, he does not urinate upon hard ground, where the ground is really hard and things will, uh, the, the, the fluid will splash back upon him. Rather, choose a ground which would be able to absorb the, the fluid straight away instead of letting it uh, splash back upon the body or the clothing. The fifth thing he mentions is the fact that it's not permitted for a person uh, that he cleans himself with his right hand. So the right hand is, is a hand that which is kept for cleanliness and is kept for eating and drinking and doing good things. So um, the Prophet ﷺ would take cautious in that uh, and he would love to use his right hands, hands for, hand for that which is good. And in this case, the Prophet wasallam and his directions are the fact that the person should avoid using his right hand and only use his left hand to clean himself uh, from uh, the stool or it be the fact that he urinates and he cleans himself with the left hand. The sixth thing, uh, if we've not lost count, is the fact that the person uh, should avoid, if he is in open places, to urinate or defecate in a place where a per their people walk or the pathway of the people. And this is something, uh, again, we see uh, um, shameless acts, the likes of that, within the country, 
where you see the fact that the person he comes back from a football match or the fact that he comes out um, of a place uh, late at night and he just stands in the middle of the street or middle of the path where people walk this is not permitted it's not allowed within Islam the fact that we uh, in the pathway of the people that a person uses this path to relieve himself the Seventh thing is the fact that the person should not urinate or defecate in a place that which is shaded. A, play, a shaded place should not be uh, a place where um, a person relieves himself. And the reason being for that is the per people uh, may use that place to sit down in or use that place to gain shade in. Again, you don't know of the fact that there may be shayateen and jinns that also may reside under these places to seek, you know, shade and so forth. So a person should um, uh, be cautious of the fact that he does not use or sit within places that which are shady to carry uh, out um, or to relieve himself. The eighth thing is the fact that running water or, or water, uh, which is in, even if in huge quantities, uh, the fact that the person should not urinate within those areas for this is uh, harm harmful towards the people and the purpose that which they may use it for it may cause them harm within that the ninth thing is the fact that what i had to do uh al khala bi shayin fihi dhikri allahi azza wa jal fihi fihi quran the person should not enter into a place or a cubicle with a mushaf in his pocket or in his um, uh, upon himself. The fact that if he does have a mushaf, then or, or, or a Quran, in this case, the book of the Quran is called a mushaf, which is uh, in the Pakistani culture we don't call it a mushaf, we just call it Quran. But in the Arabic we call it a mushaf, the book in which the Quran is written in. So it's called a mushaf. A person uh, should not carry a mushaf with inside him into a cubicle in which he will uh, relieve himself. So what does he do? He should place it outside somewhere where it's safe. Uh, somewhere where it's safe or give it to someone uh, to keep it safe. The other thing a person may ask is the fact that what about mobiles? Uh, mobile phones, uh, a person, if he, for example, opens up the app and the pixels of the app are, are, are apparent and you could see the Quran, then know the fact that he should, um, should not enter, the Quran, uh, enter into the toilet with his app open and the Quran app open upon the mobile. Rather, the person should uh, close the app off and make sure of the fact that the existence of the Quran is no longer there. When you close the app, the pixels disappear and the existence of the Quran is not there. So you should close the app off, making sure the fact that he does not enter into the, Quran, uh, into the, into the toilet with the Quran uh, app open on his phone. The tenth is the fact that the person uh, it's not permissible or it's not suitable for a person, the fact that he uh, goes inside the toilet and he he starts to speak or he starts to sing and we see this often where the people you know start to uh, sing or they start to whistle or they start to talk to each other and so forth uh, and this is not uh, permitted the fact that the person um, does that or even the fact that he recites quran or he hums the quran or anything like that it's not permitted rather know the fact that you've gone to do something that which is um, an, an act of to to relieve yourself of impurity a person should quickly uh, do his haja, do his business, and then come out of the toilet uh, clean so that he could carry out acts of ibadah in a suitable manner. And inshallah, we'll continue with the topic, inshallah, just before Salat al-Maghrib.